Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ankush. In our today's lecture, we'll be discussing about something which is very, very important and we call it as a spark architecture. Nowadays, like if you are looking for a job, definitely this question is very, very important. Like most of the people, most of the interviewers, they will expect that at least you should know the understanding about spark architecture. Because whenever we learn any new technology, we should know the architecture of the technology. Unless and until architecture is not clear, then it is very difficult to understand that technology itself. So in our lecture, we'll try to understand about how the Spark architecture works. We know that Spark is very, very faster compared to the map radius, right? So initial days when Hadoop previous version was there there was a processing engine was there which is a map reduce but map reduce was mostly dealing with the storage like whenever you want to store your intermediate in intermediate output it was storing it into your hard disk so since it was storing it on the hard disk now a lot of IO operation was happening there like because you know that Whenever you are writing something on the hard disk or you are reading it from the hard disk, it is a very slow process. So instead of storing your data on a hard disk part, better you store your intermediate result on memory part. So any data which is available on the memory, it is very very faster to write also or to read also. Now let's try to understand internally how this Spark architecture works. So whenever you are writing down your first program, let's say you are writing down your first Spark program. So your Spark program will always start with the program. We call it as a driver program. What we are calling it as a driver program. Let's say you have written one PySpark code. Okay. Let's say you have written one PySpark code and in that PySpark code, definitely you are going to write down your main function. So that main function we are calling it as a driver program. Whenever you are writing down any PySpark program, the first thing that you are going to define it, that is called Spark context. So you can consider that Spark context is the entry point of your Spark. Whenever you want to start your PySpark program or Spark program, you need to write down the Spark context because this is the entry point from where you are going to start your spark program and that program we are calling it as a driver program also now when you submit this job you are submitting from the local right you you can submit it from the local also now what happened whenever you are running any spy spark job any or spark job that needs to be internally use some dag which is directed as i grab and many other things will be used internally. So all these things will be given by the Spark context only. This is the basic programming of your Spark. Let's assume that you submitted your job. Okay, right now you have submitted your job. You have written one PySpark code. You submitted your job. So where the job will go? That job will go to the resource manager or some people are also calling it as a cluster manager. Now what is cluster manager? Cluster manager behave like a resource manager only. When I say a resource, it can be your CPU, memory, all those things will be given by this cluster manager. Right now we have a different different cluster managers are there like one cluster manager which I am going to tell you which is very famous nowadays in the market we called it as a YAR. And previously you know, Hadoop 1.0 that was a map, map reduce. But nowadays yarn is a cluster manager which is most of the time you will find it in real time production environment so what is yarn yarn is a resource manager whenever you submit your job that job definitely reads some resources right it needs some cpu memory okay all those resources will be scheduled by this cluster manager so this is a cluster manager which is playing a very very important role to manage your job what will happen as soon as you start your job as soon as you start you start your job by using this spark context 
cluster manager will provide the resources after that your data is available on worker node only let's say this is my worker node here and this is my second worker node so this is my worker node 1 and this is my worker node 2 as soon as you submit your job by using spark context cluster manager will provide the resources that is what we learn this job will be divided into the small small task what will happen the job will be divided into the small small task this is a small small task will be created on your worker node and who will execute this task there is a person we call it as an executor there is a person we call it as an executor so you can consider that executor is a person who is going to execute this task a small small task will be created and this task is the actual task where you know you are going to perform your whatever things like it can be grouped by filter whatever you wish to do all those things will be done by your task only where it is happening on your worker node because worker node are the one which are actually holding your data your data is available here so you are not sending your data anywhere that is the architecture of your spark what you are doing you are sending your code here on your worker node so your code is available here and code is available here near to the data who is going to perform it that will be performed by the executor so executor are the processes which will actually ask and this will perform this task now if you want to let's say increase the performance of your job you can increase this number of executor right now i have allocated only one executor so you can allocate number of executors also like when you submit your job by using spark submit you can increase the number of executor you can increase the executor memory the core all those details you can explicitly mention from your spark submit so accordingly the number of executor will be allocated over here but who will monitor all this job like whether your job is running whether it is failing all this will be done by your cluster manager so cluster manager is the one who is going to monitor this job once the job get completed okay let's assume that this task got executed and they got the output so finally that output will go to the driver program only because driver program is the one which is going to show you the actual result so all of your results will be accumulated over here towards the driver program and this is how you know your spark architecture works so you need to understand about the cluster manager you need to understand about the spark context driver program is actually the main program from where you are going to execute this and there are number of executors are there executors will actually run your task and that task will be executed and that will be managed by your cluster manager so in our case we are going to use yarn as a cluster manager so if you think that you know uh, you want to understand this spark architecture in details you can reach out to me for the spark related training we are starting our new how to spark training from the next week please contact me if you are interested for the real time spark training thanks bye bye